feels like there will be another hidden person to even this all out, you know? I just thought that. So, the only person, two people we haven't hung out with is Brian and Damien. Uh, I may hang out with someone else again. Uh, uh, I don't know. Let's go hang out with Damien. War chest. Damien seemed really interesting. A little odd, but interesting. I think I should hang out with him to get to know him better. Type out a message. Hey dude, you seem cool. We should hang out sometime. And he keeps typing. And typing. He's good at writing a novel. I leave the computer to make some coffee. He's still typing. <laughs> I see my coffee. Computer finally dings. <laughs> Oh, well, there's more. Well, I have a friend who talks like this. <laughs> oh my god. D Blood March. Hey, Amanda. Can you help me with something? I'm not popping your bag of pimples. No, no, can you interpret this for me? just don't understand that speed. Like, is this how you kids communicate with each other now? I'll tell you, this is the hot new thing. See, their kids got over saying lol and lmao. <laughs> or whatever. They decided that they needed to do is bring it back to the 1800s. So what do I do? <laughs> with your pen and quill. What? Did you forget to unpack the pen and quill, Dad? How will we access, address the nobleman in regards to your upcoming debutante ball? Okay, now I know you're messing with me. <laughs> or our dowry. Or... So you read Pride and Prejudice for school one time and now you're reciting things you know about it to back to me, aren't you? Oh, still got a B. So what do I say to Damien? Mm -hmm. Amanda reaches over me and types on the keyboard. Sure thing, dude. Regards. Captain. <laughs> You're way too happy. Afternoon tea and a stroll around a garden sounds lovely, actually. I suppose that's that. <laughs> this house is so evil, I love it. I'm not really big about dark decors like this all on the outside. I do like bright colours in my house, but I do like lots of dark accessories at the same time. <laughs> like, you know. The yeah, Manor Estate, the Gothic architecture looms over the other homes in the cul-de-sac. Walk past the gargoyle guarding the front door. There is no doorbell. The pull a cuff, bat's head, door knocker back, and all those sound echoes throughout the house. It's a bit creppy, but I enter the home and take a few steps into the foyer, noting the oil portraits of her, who I assume are dead relatives hanging on the wall. As I'm admiring this <laughs> doggo over here, <laughs> and the skulls. Where my skulls? Ooh, a, t a cake tray, a cake plate, but no scones. Hmm. Front door slammed shut behind me. Hello, Mario. Mario! The oil lamp.
lamp in the corner flickers dimly casting shadows. It's actually quite well lit in here. They're staring at me. Where is it so cold? Where's Mario? <laughs> Pleasure to have you in my home. I look up and see Damien standing on the top of the majestic staircase with a walking candle holder. What's with the door slamming shut? Oh, sorry, there was a draft. And the door creaking open when I knocked. I left the door unlocked. And the creepy oil paintings? I like oil paintings. <laughs> right. 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 Please, let me show you around. Okay. Damien leads me around his house, showcasing his parlor. Sitting room, auxiliary sitting room, and parlor again for some reason. But he doesn't have a solarium, so. What a shame. This is one of the older homes on the block, yes, but nowhere near as old as the architecture might suggest. Through extensive renovations, I have been able to craft a residence. That is both historically accurate to the Victorian period and equipped with the amenities of any modern dwelling. Walk past a door covered in bumper stickers, caution tape, and a Black Parade poster. Did they listen to My Chemical Romance in the Victorian era? Why are there so much? It's only MCR references. What the fuck? That's my son's room. We know the rebellious teenage years. Onward, onward, there's more to see. Why would, if you have a like extremely goth dad already, would your rebellious teen years still be a goth phase? Or would you be like, hey man, I'm rebelling. Now I'm a believer. <laughs> like, you know. My dad's such a psycho nerd. I just like the swag swag YOLO. <laughs> I always think about that, especially like, you know, like uh, famous metal musicians. You always sat there like rock and metal musicians. Are there kids rebellious years than being like, I hate you and your music, dad. I'm going to go listen to shit top 40 garbage. So is that what that is that what happened? It's not a phase, Dad. It's not a phase. It's literally a phase. That's what pop music is. It's a constant, ongoing phase. <laughs> like, it's what's popular at that moment. <laughs> we reach a door at the end of the hall. Demon opens it with a flourish. Hey, I saw your butterflies already. The library with my cheese law. How period appropriate. Damien is clearly proud of this room. Pick up a book. <laughs> Many people thought the more tawdry novels would encourage youths into a life of crime. Cause too much of a distraction from work and school. Pull out a book at random and examine the warm cover. Opening it, I turn to a random page and read aloud. <laughs> he looks mad. Naruto struggled against the chains that Sasuke had bound him with. Shirtless and out of breath, he looked up at Sasuke. Sasuke smoked, unbuttoning his ninja pants. Okay, I think that's enough. <laughs> Damien snaps the book shut and puts it back onto the shelf. That's a rare book from my private collection. <laughs> I'm gonna, like, be honest, I seriously thought you were gonna pin that on your son. Oh yes, he's going through a weeb fanfic phase. You know the youths of today. Not just be like, that's mine. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you look to the butterflies? 
Damien has a nice backyard. <clears throat> it showcases a beautiful view of the rest of the cul-de-sac. Hey, I can see Craig. I see Craig everywhere lately. His door is on his back. Damn! <laughs> he sees me and waves happily doing push-ups with one hand now. Damn! <laughs> Did you know that Victorians spent at least 20 hours a week gazing longingly out of full-length windows? Wait, really? No, but Victorians would appreciate telling a good joke. It's pretty impressive. Nice bugs. You already shown me. The pinna's gambit. Is that a thing? No. <laughs> Please. Will you join me for tea? Yeah, I do like your cake plate, so... I can't believe we're having a high tea. I never thought I'd get to do this. I've done this and it's fucking sick. I love this shit. <laughs> I live for this shit. Damien smiles to himself. What? It's a common misconception that high tea refers to the wealth of the class of the people enjoying it. When in fact the high refers to both the later time of day that the working class had to enjoy tea and the height of the tables on which they're served. Oh. We're currently enjoying afternoon tea. That's informative. Tiny sandwich. Are there a lot of golfs in Maple Bay? I like your cape. Your home is really impressive. I just noticed that those spinning things were aubergines. It's <laughs> always got to be the eggplant OG. You put a lot of work into this place. Thank you. Really? No one's ever mentioned your home before? Like, the amount of work you put into it. Uh, I mean, that's a lot of skulls. That's like a horse skull. It's like a rabbit skull. Like, I think that's a dog's. Like, I don't know where you're getting these from, but that's a lot of animals. Yeah, I'm kind of jealous. Where do you get your skulls, dude? It's very generous of you to say. What got you so interested in the golf shit? <laughs> well, when I was a young boy, my father said it was just a phase, so this is just to spite him. <laughs> Did he take you into the city? <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> Sorry. Haha, <laughs> do you guys see a marching band? I do not understand. Your kid listens to this band. You serious? Of course. But it's, you know, the song. Amanda made me listen to it. Serious. I love to see him. much. <laughs> He's like doing that smile that that cat does in that meme. The kind of really straight smile. It's like... <laughs> I've always had a love for art, history, fashion. Oh, I used to collect the taxidermy animals. I don't really like that shit, but like, cool. I've seen it and I'm always a bit like, hmm, why would you want to preserve dead body in your house? It's just weird. That's from a very death metal person. <laughs> I just don't get it. Why not go all the way? I like not dying when I catch a cold. He takes a sip of tea. I can acknowledge that there were many terrible things about the Victorian era and try to live a life that strictly aligns with those ideals, which would be <laughs> admittedly horrid. Yes, why don't go and live in a smoke-filled city and work in an unsafe work environment and get caught in a machine? <laughs> yeah, I agree. It takes a critical mind to truly appreciate something to the fullest, and to be cognizant of its flaws and love it all the same. 
tell me, Captain, do you have hobbies? Oh man, I do, but I don't know if I care about anything the way you care about this stuff. I love to hear about your interests. He's doing the cat smile again. Hearing someone talk about the things they're passionate about is intriguing and quite honestly rather attractive. Please do tell me about your hobbies. Quick, sound sophisticated. <laughs> love me some word jumbles. I <laughs> learned how to juggle once. I like watching soap making videos on the internet. I actually did this once. It's harder than I thought. <laughs> it's poetic, really. <laughs> oh, so you're a writer? I'm a word jumbler, bitch. We finish our tea and finger sandwiches. Come on, I have one more thing to show you. What? Didn't realize he just had the entirety of Tuscany in his back garden. Damien takes me around the back of his home, where a variety of flowers flourish in beautifully landscaped rows. A small stone path weaves for him, butterflies flit lazily through the air. My garden! Realistically, this would take a retired person all of their day. Like, you know, it's a lot of work to garden. It's beautiful. Thank you. Victorians took flowers and floral arrangements very seriously, and a lot of my British people friends still do to this day, so it's just a very popular pastime. Yeah, they are. Flowers and plants are symbolic of different meanings. Even more interesting is that one flower could mean different things depending on the other plants it's paired with. One had to be extremely careful, as even the style in which the ribbon was tied around the bouquet affected the message. Orange flower. The orange lily. <laughs> My loins are ablaze. Thou art the tightest. Three cheers for sweet revenge. <laughs> Where is everything in my chemical romance thing? <laughs> oh, well, I didn't know that. All I know is that the white lily is a symbol of death. Trust me to know symbols of death. Black rose, white lilies. I think it's the peace lily or the lily of the valley. And Edelweiss is a symbol for white supremacy movements in Nazi Germany. Because it's Hitler's flower. <laughs> well. It's precisely why floral arrangement is so challenging. What's your favorite type of flower? Snapdragons? Honeysuckle? Sunflowers? Oh, sunflowers are so nice. I like all of these. Good climbing plant. Gotta have a good climbing plant sometimes. Gotta cover those horrible wall walls so it doesn't look so like industrial brutalism. Snapdragons are pretty. Do you like me a sunflower? Remind me a sunshine, then you can eat the seeds as a snack. What a practical choice. My stomach grumbles. Now I want sunflower seeds. Oh, you put together a bouquet for me. You would put together a bouquet for me. Nobody's ever given me a bouquet before. Follow Damien down the footpath and admire more beautiful flowers. The phone rings. Will you excuse me? I must take this. He has a cell phone. <laughs> I'm a little surprised it's not a rotary. Go for it. What a lovely yard. Everyone should enjoy a good garden. It's 
It's make me wish I had put a little effort into that garden of man and I tried to start one time. The watermelons grew to the size of cherry tomatoes and then immediately died. Oh hey, a gargoyle. Oh no, I knocked over the gargoyle. <laughs> Fix that garg. Stop. Oh no! No! Shit! Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, fix the gog. S plus legendary gargoyle fixing. <laughs> Ooh, that was close. Here comes Damien. He looks upset. Captain, my sincerest apologies to have kept you waiting. There's an urgent matter that I must attend to. So I'm afraid I must take my leave. No problemo, dude. Everything alright? Damien worries the hem of his coat with his fingers and looks away. Everything is perfectly fine, but I, uh... It's Lucian. What's wrong? He appears to have... Well... His teacher needs me to come to school post-haste. Do you want me to punch a kid? No, you don't have to. Let me come with you. Our dad's gotta stick together. Because apparently none of us have jobs. We're just kind of child rearing, going out on dinner dates, and being gay. <laughs> like we got nothing else in our lives. No one has a job. Like you've heard no one mention a job, like except for like the guy who's a minister. And I feel like he does that more because he wants to be a minister. You know what I mean? Like it's more for charity. <clears throat> This is one of Lucian's more elaborate stunts. I would greatly treasure having another parent by my side. Let's -a go! <laughs> Yo, Hugo, we were hanging out. Oh yeah, Hugo has a job, he's a teacher. <laughs> oh yeah, one of them owns a coffee shop, but it just feels like it's there, like... Someone that, like it's romantic. It doesn't feel like they do it for real reasons, they do it for romance. Dewey and I walk into the school and greeted by an anxious looking Hugo. We're here in record time. I wouldn't miss it for the world, dear friend. Whatever it is, it doesn't seem like this is Hugo and Damien's first time to the My Kids Are In Trouble radio. To be fair, Hugo's kids are shit too. What is it this time? This Damien, you have to see to believe. Sacrifice, 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 sacrifice. <laughs> Leads us through the busy corridors, we pass by classes, I vaguely wonder if Amanda Panda's around. Wow, my kid is like the most well behaved out of all of these kids. I'm a great dad, shut up. Small boiler room, watch your step. I can hear faint voices, they don't sound happy. He's murdered someone. Creepy basement. Oh, that's your kid. He's an asshole. <laughs> Why is Hugo's kid here too? With him and Lucien in earnest, Lucien has a bloody nose. I can't make heads or tails of this. I look around the scene of the crime and see a bunch of bricks and some masonry tools scattered around. What happened here? Ernest punch me. Is he trying to kill me? To be fair, if you're gonna give your kids pretentious names like Lucian and Ernest, they're gonna grow up to like kind of rebel. The room falls silent. I'm not trying to kill you, dumbass. I was trying to <laughs> build a brick wall around you to see what would happen. You promised me there was wine down here. Oh my god, he's reenacting a Poe short story. Whoa, 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 wait a second. Lucien, did you try to cask of a mentolado, Ernest? I'm so glad he got that. It's so on brand for him to get that. <clears throat> I'm neither confirming nor denying that. I turn to Damien and whisper to him, What's, uh, what's cask of a mentolado? It's a classic Edgar Allan Poe short story where a man gets his enemy drunk. 
lures him down into the cellar for the promise of wine of a fine vintage and buries him behind a brick wall. It's a lovely story. It is a good story, actually. Like, <laughs> it's quite funny. So wait, Lucian tried to do that to him. Because, like, the victim is, like, the whole time the guy's like, no, I'm bricking you behind this wall. The guy's really drunk in the story, and he's like, ha ha, great joke, friend. He's like, yeah, great joke, I'm bricking you behind this wall. He's like, ha ha, this is such a great prank, bro. And he's like, I'm not pranking you. But I'll get you your wine soon, but first you must be bricked in behind this wall. He's like, okay. And then he's like, guy? Guy? <laughs> just like, he's left to die? <laughs> and he's just like, wow, you must be a moron. Also, Cement doesn't set that quickly. He could have just pushed his way back out. Like, it's such a strange story. I was curious to see how it would turn out. I wasn't actually going to leave him here. What's the thought process? And this was just going to sit still while you slowly build a tomb around him. <laughs> it went for like 20 minutes because he's an idiot, but then he realized that I'd lied about the wine. And you were cackling maniacally. That kind of tipped me off. 20 minutes, Ernest. You're a son of a teacher and you couldn't work out this was a bad plan. It took you 20 minutes. We just did an entire two week unit on the cask of Amintadado and it took you 20 minutes to realize Lucian was leading you into this ruse. Did you read? Can you read? I read the first five pages and read a review of the movie. It's only five pages long and there's no movie. Ah, uh, yeah, you're right, I paid Lucian to read it for me. <clears throat> he didn't even pay me, so when you think about it, this was me teaching him a lesson. Demon and Hugo both have their heads in their hands. You guys are always telling me to engage in the literature. And I did. I don't see a problem here. I found this under a what the hell. Don't do whatever that was again. You both are suspended for a week. And it's inducing high five. The teacher starts to stomp up the stairs. Hugo, I'll cover your class. Take your son home, Mr. Bloodmarch. You too. Ah, thank you for your mediation. <clears throat> we all head up the stairs. Fucking lock the spoopy ass fight club basement if you don't want kids in it. <laughs> like preteens like hiding in corners away from the bullies you know just like if you don't want them in there lock it tense silence I'm in my car <laughs> we're all in the car Lucien puts his head up the stairs thing again I'm not going to therapy again <laughs> your dad's cooler than you Lucien <laughs> I know, son, it's entirely up to you whether or not you want to go. But I care about you, and I can see that you're struggling. So if you do decide that you would like to speak to a professional about your feelings, we can do that too. Maybe you could spend this week looking for a summer job. Hmm? I know how much you want your own car. I can't believe Ding is keeping his cool. I'm impressed. Fine. Thanks for not freaking out too hard. I love you, son. Lucian continues to stare out the window. Love you too. Ah, what a good relationship. We spend the rest of the drive in relative silence. The moment we pull into the driveway, Lucian hops out of the car, slams the door, runs inside. I didn't expect to have that conversation in front of you. He and I have a lot we need to work out. It's alright, and all things considered, Lucy's bricklaying was pretty good, so there's your silver lining. There is that, yes. Probably just going through a phase. I admi really admire how you handled that. Does this felt kind of thing happen a lot? You're a lot more diplomatic with him than I would have been. I just want what's best for him, and I don't think yelling at him would do either of us any favors. It really does. You're a good dad. Aubergine time. See you around soon? It'll be my honor and my pleasure. Oh, 
I come home to find Amanda curled up on the couch with a blanket watching TV. I plop next to her. Yo. What you're watching? Tiny House Hunting Bros. Extreme Edition. I hate the show. <laughs> the couple on screen bickers back and forth while standing in an extremely small house made out of recycled bottles. The Tiny House Hunting Brothers watch them with the music expression, both of their heads touching the low ceiling. <laughs> I told you I wanted a two-bed, two-bath, shabby sheet cottage. This house doesn't even have a bathroom. <laughs> Outhouse is only 20 yards away, it's not that bad. I'm not pooping outside, Greg. Why don't they just get a regular sized house? I don't know. How afternoon, Tigo. He got strained, we had to go to school to pick up Lucian since he tried to... He lured Ernest down to the cell with the promise of a fine ventures and tried to break him into the wall, right? How do you know that? Has everyone read the story except for me? Lucy and live stream the entire thing. This entire day is beyond me. No meow! But otherwise, it's a fun day. Damien Guy's a character, but he's really good company and a surprisingly diplomatic dad. I dig his style. You don't want me to. Hmm. DB. Captain, listen, this is you from the past. Whoa, how'd this happen? I figure you're trying to reply to this because I know myself, but this is an automated message from you earlier this morning. <laughs> it's socially unacceptable to go out and buy ice cream. I forgot I did that. I forgot how I did that as well. The future is amazing. Life is short and ice cream should always be acceptable. But unfortunately this isn't the society we live in. It's less the society we live in than the more me projecting my own anxiety about being judged on to others. But you know what I mean. By the time you're reading this it is a certain time of day in which nobody will bat an eye at you for going out and buying ice cream. You know what to do. Be good me. Buy that ice cream. I found a treat. <laughs> I will buy some ice cream. Rocky Road Pistachio. Better get two tubs. <laughs> Can't share a tub. Hey mister! around to see Ernest leaning up against the wall of the convenience store. Ernest? You're cool, right? I'm so cool. I'm shocked you even have to ask Dude Meister. Oh my god, I asked the wrong person. Could you just help me out? Help you out, there's no fire involved, is there? Just clouds. So if I give you 20 dollars, would you Will you buy me e-liquid? Fuck's e-liquid. <laughs> and this was e-liquid. It's like a Gatorade, you know. Electrolyte liquid, I get it for myself, but I'm banned here for trying to run a grift on the cashier. Classic fiddle game, you know the deal. Talk about balance electrolytes and I got you there, little buddy. Didn't know you played the fiddle. Let's ask the clerk for blue cran apple vortex. You'll know what it is. Blue crazy void stare. <laughs> Say, where's your finest e liquid? Behind the counter, you got an ID? First of all, my daughter is older than you. Second of all, I'm flattered. I switched shampoo recently. Is that taking some years off? Look, you need to be 21 to buy vape juice. Your hair doesn't look a day over 20. Thank you. <laughs> Wait a minute, are you trying to butter me up to get me to buy more ice cream because it's working? That's the size stop at the spot and they're staring at me. Double wait a minute. So you're telling me that e-liquid is not a sports drink. It's for vaping. 
Ernest is watching us intently through the window. I better go give that kid a piece of my mind, I see. Okay, look, I'm gonna pretend that you didn't try to trick me into buying you the old Baphomet's cough syrup and then go inside here to purchase my ice cream. I won't tell your dad if you promise to scram. Now stop vaping, you'll get popcorn long. What if I give you $25? Go home, Ernest. <coughs> As I'm walking back inside, Ernest calls after me. You can get popcorn loan from microwave popcorn, you know. I no longer trust this <laughs> child, but the mere notion <laughs> strikes fear into my heart. <laughs> I go back inside to complete my purchase with the good cashier. Thank you, kind sir, for your time and generous hair compliments. You got it, bub. I glance out the window wild to see Ernest still outside. Looks like he's talking to some other poor sap. Guess I should go outside and save this other guy some grief. Wait a second, that's definitely a cop, old oh boy. I grab my tubs of ice cream and bowl outside. Ernest is already face down on the hood of a squad car. Ernest, did you seriously just try to get a cop to buy you e-liquid? Do you know this kid? Never met him in my life. <laughs> I'm friends with his dad. My daughter goes to school with him. I'm friends with his dad. Oh uh, yeah, we live in the same cul-de-sac. I know his dad. Listen, he's a good kid, and I'm this boy's father. I turn around and see Robert walking up the street toward the convenience store. Ernest, what are you doing? I want a lawyer. First of all, good first instinct, remember that you're not required to answer any question from a police officer without a lawyer present. You're this boy's father? Yes, sir. Ernest likes to lash out at me like this ever since the accident. <laughs> oh, um, I don't like talking about it. That's fine. Robert <laughs> gets a wistful twinkle in his eye. Fucking Robert. It all started seven summers ago. My hair was long then, new metal was still in style. Ernest and I were down in the Florida swampland scavenging for Sir, I can leave you to take it from here. <laughs> Sounds good, thanks. <laughs> uh, Ernest, come along now, you'll be cleaning grout from the rain gutter for a week, thanks to this transgression. The police officer gets into his car, drives off, I'm stunned just how cool Robert was back there. Thanks, I want to say Richard. Oh. Don't mention it. Hemingway. Got in trouble plenty of times in my life, just tired of just trying to do my good deed for the day. Will you buy me e-liquid if I give you $20? Child, I will end you. <laughs> hey, Captain, will you walk on us home with me? Sure. Ernest runs ahead, presumably so he won't be seen with us, which is a thing I think kids do. Reminds me of my childhood. Well, maybe I wasn't a moron. Seems like he tortures his dad. Seems like he tortures just about everybody. He even stole your wallet. What? No, he... Ooh, He stole my fucking wallet! Why are you doing this to yourself? I... What? Robert points at my tubs of ice cream. Don't fucking judge me, man. One of them's for Amanda. Oh, it's the quality. You work hard, Captain. You're a good dad. Don't you think you deserve top shelf ice cream? <laughs> but these were on sale. Now treat yourself. Go big or go home. Real vanilla being real pistachio. You deserve it. <laughs> Ernest is fleeing. We arrive at the cul-de-sac, and Ernest runs to his home. That boy is the reason why we don't have prizes in cereal anymore. <laughs> catch you around, Captain. Robert tosses me my wallet. I catch it with surprise look on my face. I stole it back. What a cool guy who's so weird and enigmatic! Keep it in your front pocket, or use a chain like back in your scar days. Smell you later, dweeb. <laughs> See you, Robert. <laughs> See you later, fucker. <laughs> I go back inside my home. 
Ready to spend the night with my ice cream and also Amanda, I guess. <laughs> so weird. Okay. I'm gonna save and call that a day. Oh. We're learning more about Robert. We're learning more. Slowly. That's good. I want to learn more about Joseph and Matt and Craig as well. Craig's cool. They're all kind of cool. Except Brian. Yeah, Brian. I got his trading card on Steam recently and it told me everything I needed to know. Like, he, he likes to pretend he's better than you at everything. That's basically his card description. I'm like, well, fuck off then, Brian. <laughs> We're a non-toxic society of cool people here, except for fucking Brian and maybe Joseph's wife. Ugh. And the kids. Ugh, kids. Anyway. Ugh. Yeah, time to leave it there. Smell you later.